Hello, Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College Sports Information Director Don Hammock coming to you from a happy AL May Memorial Stadium in Perkinson where the Gulf Coast Bulldogs defeated East Central Warriors 31 to 13. We're going to talk with the head coach Jack Wright, defensive back Jay Sean Baker, and running back Cam Thomas while we look at some highlights from the big win. Later we'll introduce you to defensive lineman JV and Gill, and lastly Coach Hope Adams will introduce us to her 2021-22 Bulldogs women's basketball team. Stick around. Here on the field with Gulf Coast head coach Jack Wright. Jack, um, you said it afterwards, it's a little bit of a struggle this year, but uh, fight all the way to the end and you kind of win going away. Um, yeah, you know, our kids are conditioned now to fight four quarters. Um, that's a good feeling. You know, uh, we're, we're going to play the full four quarters and give great effort throughout, and that's what we did tonight. Just proud of, the, proud of their effort. I mean, our effort's been great all year, and tonight's no different. Yeah overcome some adversities a lot of it self-inflicted but able to kind of keep positive both sides of the ball pick each other up um, let's start with the defense you know the regulators give up 13 points the only touchdown was on a 10-yard drive correct what kind of job did they do tonight just proud of them um, they come to play four quarters I mean they'll give up a play here and there uh, but they always respond we throughout the course of the first six games we put them in some tight spots they've been backed up at the beginning of some drives through you know, kick up <coughs> through the other team's special teams play or, or a turnover on, <coughs> on offense. Uh, but they responded every time, you know, led by Mike Smith, just a fun group to watch. Um, and you've had, to, you've had to go through some depth on the defensive line, too. They've been able to pick it up. And really, I thought they kind of took over the game in the fourth quarter. They did. You know, we've, we've shuffled that lineup on defense a lot. Coach Schufelt's always done that. But this year's been an extreme um, – as far as moving guys around, finding the right fit, just trying to get the most out of every player. You know, and we have a lot of talent. We just got to find the right mix. I think we're getting closer and closer to that. I think we were a little closer tonight. Josiah Perryman, a, a freshman, came on big there at the end, had two sacks there in that final possession. Um, and then Jay Sean Baker had a big pick six. That, that really yeah. iced it. So, Yeah, you know, we've been waiting on some of those young guys like the Perryman twins and even on the defensive front. A lot of those younger guys have been playing more and more and more, and they're getting better. Offensively, you were able to make some plays when it mattered, and uh, how did y'all kind of get pointed in the right direction? Um, you know, I think we came out running the football better in the second half. That really kind of made, you know, the life of a quarterback a lot easier, being able to look out there and see where his one-on-ones are. Um, in the first half, they did a good job of, of stopping big plays and really slowing us down, work, work, forcing us to uh, work the field. and. We just didn't execute, you know, enough plays in a row to score touchdowns, and I think that we turned a corner on that in the second half. Um, we're going to talk with Cam Thomas individually here in a minute, but he did a great job coming back after missing last week, and you know he's he's not 100 percent, but man, was he uh, was he gutty tonight? He was gutty. I'm um, just proud of that kid. <laughs> he's been through a lot the last two weeks. Um, you know, really, if you take everything into consideration, everything that surrounded him, everything that surrounded the team. I'm just very, very proud of, of them and, and, and him especially. You know, that's a big night tonight. And considering what he's been through, just even more proud of him. Next week, it's a rematch of the last two state championship games. Northwest, you know a little bit about them. Um, what do you expect in next week? Uh, you know, they're always really, really good on defense. Always tough to move the football on consistently. Um, they've got a returning quarterback, you know, who was very efficient. Um, they got you know a lot of third year guys, which is kind of what this league's comprised of this year. Uh, they have their share of those guys, and so they're always a challenge. I mean, they've been at the top of the league now for a long, long time, and um, there's a reason they've got good coaches and good players. Congratulations, Jack. Thank you. Here on the field with Jay Sean Baker, one of the leaders of the Regulators. Jay Sean, how did y'all play tonight? Hey, on defense, we play. We we really fought it out tonight. You know, we play four quarters every game, so we have to come out with that mentality to play very hard. And we played hard tonight, and we came out with a W. Give up 13 points. The only touchdown they scored was on a 10-yard drive that took them four downs to get the 10 yards. That's how much of a fight it was for them. What, what were y'all trying to do defensively? On defense, we really just try to keep everything bottled up. 
So they kept they were running different formations and trying to sneak those two tight ends in heavy set. So we'll have to switch up a couple things. So we just we just stuck to what we do. We played hard and we we stuck we stuck the gaps up and we came out with a W. I know you've been waiting to talk about this up 24-13 last couple minutes. What happens on the play? Well, we, we was in we was in the zone coverage and I on the previous drive he threw the same pass. So I was like he gonna come back to it. So when he came back to it, I jumped around and after that I was looking for my dog to block for me. You uh, you played tightrope walker down the sideline. You think you had enough room to squeeze through there? Oh yes, yeah, sir. After I seen five and seven, I was like, man, I know they got my back, so I just kept going down the sideline. I had one man to beat, and we kept it out with the two now. Got a big game next week. Uh, I know you get to celebrate this one a little bit, but uh, what are you thinking about heading heading forward? Uh, we got to get to work. We got to get to work Sunday, actually. So when we come back Sunday. It's gonna be a great and grand day all through the week. We know we got a big game coming up next week for sure. Congratulations, Jay okay. Sean. Oh, yes, sir. Appreciate that, Mr. Dunn. Go regulators. Here on the field with running back Cam Thomas. Cam, I just told you your stats, 34 rushes, 185 yards. You tired? Just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> you also said you didn't feel like 34 carries, so it felt you must have had a little bit left in the tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't really as tired as, like, as the past games. I guess, I guess getting in shape more, you feel me? But I didn't feel like 34 at all. Um, I know you're not quite 100%. Everybody can see the, the knee brace on your knee. How, how, did, how were you able to fight through it tonight? Just don't think about it. Just don't think about it. Just, just go out there. Just give, give, it, a, give it all my all. Y'all uh, were able to, to, to make some plays. You know, offensive line created some space for you. What, what were they doing tonight that was so effective? They, they was opening holes, big holes, you know, for 185. That's, that's pretty good. You know, the old line pretty did good. Um, what, what did East Central do to try and slow y'all down? Uh, they were really stopping our outside stretch plays. Really, that's that's what they they did good at. I say, but like that was the most part for the most part our outside zone play. You got a big game next week. We got uh, Northwest coming down here. Teams have played for the state championship the last two years. Uh, what are you getting ready for next week? Uh, coming in having a big game, big day, just doing what I do. All right, congratulations, Cam. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, Mr. Don. Creating a legacy takes time takes dedication, spirit, and a greater vision. That vision starts here at the University of Mississippi. What will you be remembered by? Your character, your contributions, your friendship. Your legacy will define who we are now and who we are becoming for our state, our students, and our future. Ole Miss, build your legacy. Let's meet Gulf Coast defensive lineman JV and Gill, learn about his nickname and about his little brothers. Started playing football at the age of six, and I love it. You know, after doing it for so long, you just fall in love with it. I, I get to be physical all day, every day, and you know, can't no, nothing happen to me for it, you know. It's nothing gonna go against it. I got a nickname Joker from Pee Wee Football. Um, my Pee Wee Football coach gave it to me when I, I had ate a purple and green popsicle before practice. So he was like, he gonna start calling me Joker. And this stuck with me since then. So to come to Go Coast, um, really I was coming out of high school, I was committed to Ida Womble. And two days before signing the day, the two linebackers I went to high school with, they took their offer. And then I was like, you know, that's just a messed up situation for them to do that. And then I felt like Go Coast was home. So, so I ended up. Uh, Coach Mill, you gonna bring the energy every day, that passion, you know. And that's what give us the energy to come, come to work every day and, and give it all we got on, on the field and off the field. He, he really stressed us just being violent, getting our blocks, running to the ball for sure. You got to run to the ball if you want to be a D-lineman here. Go so shoot. He the, he the heart and soul of the defense. You know, when, he, when he, he down or he ain't feeling it or something going on, you know, you can tell because everybody react the same way. Everybody, you know, that's just how it is with him. Great facilities, great training room, great everything. You know, if you want to get it done, you can always you can come up here any time of the day, watch film, get treatment, anything. The students support us 100 percent. Like you know, when we lose, if they feel like they lost, you know, that's how I feel. Uh, my favorite clan right now might sound a little weird. I got dance appreciation, and she she bring the energy every day for sure. Uh, Brittany Pan, she real she real energetic. Uh, from the time class starts to the time it's over, she playing music, she running around the room, you know. She always got that energy. 
Nah, I ain't got to dance. Hope not either. <laughs> After losing a teammate that was dear to me, a D-line brother, we just, um, we plan on winning, winning the championship. Uh, I, it got to happen, really. It just got to happen. Levi was a good dude. I knew every day coming in, I can get a joke, we're going to joke, we're going to laugh, we're going to do whatever every day, and we're going to get it done on the field. So, I love the offense. Regardless of what's happening, what's going on, I'm going to pick my brothers up because, you know, they don't need no negative, no negative energy going on on the sideline, nothing like that. Something bad go on, it's our job to pick them up. If they don't score, they don't win. Sweating. Cause I'm like, man, this is a hard fought game, man. You know, just for us to pull that off, it feel like we really did for Levi, like perseverance for sure. I like to play the game, play Madden, Madden the 2K. My little brothers, my little brothers, they, they my heart and soul. Anything happened to them, I don't know what I'd do to my little brothers. Love them to death, I'm always with them when I'm at home, for sure. I got two little brothers, Bryson and Colston. Bryson is 10, Colston is five. Colson just got his helmet this past weekend. He ran around the house with his helmet on. Yeah, he fired up about that. Gulf Coast women's basketball coach Hope Adams is going to introduce us to her 2021-22 Bulldogs. The deep squad will tip off November 1st. We're very deep this year. Um, I feel like we'll be able to rotate five in, five out. We want to play a very fast-paced game, uh, but we do also have Big Shea. Um, but we're implementing some things for her because we do want to get the ball up and down the court pretty fast. It's a fun way to play. Um, I think it's fun to watch um, from a spectator point of view. And so um, this year we want to play fast, we want to push the ball, but we're very deep. This year we're definitely going to be counting on Elsie Harris. We didn't um, get to play her last year because of her knee injury, but she's coming back strong. She's been looking better the last couple of weeks playing off that knee. We also brought in Morgan Payne. She's a transfer from Bolger Parish um, at the point guard position, just to make sure that we actually have some depth in that point guard position. In the past, we um, have not had, we have not been deep in that position. We also brought in Sadie Williams. Um, she's a transfer from ULM. Um, she can shoot the cover off the ball and she has very high IQ. And of course, we are returning Anaya Sadler, um, one of our best slashers, Alicia Tucker, um, who was one of our best shooters last year, and Ayanna McNary. Uh, we also have Beverly Tillman, who has been very impressive in practice over the last few weeks. She's competing hard off the, on every play, um, starting to understand our plays better and get in the groove of basketball. We also have a freshman, Amber Scott, who brings tons of hustle to the game. Um, she's a fearless competitor. She's trying to catch up to the speed of the game, but she's going to bring some value to our team this year. Uh, we also have Devasha, who will be a third year uh, sophomore, so she's returning. She brings us leadership. She's a great kid on and off the court, and so she represents the program very well. I think this third year is really going to help her with us actually being able to get her to the next level. Our forwards, uh, we're, we're, we've always been deep in that position. We've, we've always been very dominant in the post. We'll be dominant in the post this year as well. We have Sharice Bridges returning. She shot 53% from the three-point line last year, which is tremendous for her position. It actually puts us in a great position where we can pull her out and it pulls the big man out because you have to guard her from the three-point line. We have um, TK Kitchens returning. TK has been doing a great job. She's getting in shape. She's a force to reckon with when she's in that paint. Uh, she can also knock down the shot outside. We have Shabria Cronin uh, from the Abbeville High School returning. She's, she runs the floor very well. She's coming into her own, understanding her role. She's a rebounding machine. And we also have uh, Brianna Miller, who transferred in from Pearl River. Um, very athletic, uh, cleans the boards up for us. And she's, she's kind of been surprising us over the last couple of weeks because her game, um, she just has so much in her bag. And so, like I said, we're very deep. So I'm really excited about this team. I've seen leaders start to rise up. Um, and that's very important with a basketball team, especially when you're talking about winning championships. Uh, the best teams, they're coached from within. And I'm actually seeing players rise up and they're starting to get on each other accountability. Um, it's been a long journey since July and we took them through a lot uh, because we're really trying to prepare their minds and their bodies because I feel like this team is very special. And um, I think we'll be right there in the middle of the pack with trying to win a championship this year. And so the biggest focus with this year was their mindset. They're making sure that mentally 
we are tough enough to handle what's coming. Um, don't mean we're going to win them all, but as long as we're playing well when the end comes and we can um, finish the final game and come up with a championship, that's our goal this year. Um, I think this year the state is pretty even. Of course, Jones is always good, and so um, they have a really good guard over there this year. But as far as just JUCO basketball this year, because we did a unique thing where all 14 schools are going to play each other, so um, we just got one conference. We don't have to play each other twice this year. But as far as just the state, I think it's, it's anybody ball game, especially on the women's side. So it's going to get down to the team that's, that's the toughest um, and the team that, that wants to win and will do whatever it takes to win. Of course, being in the South, I love the new format. Uh, it, it keeps me away from Jones twice. It keeps me away from Colleen twice, and of course, Pearl River. Um, I also, I think it gives us a good chance to just play everybody in the state um, and give, give other teams an opportunity to prove who they are. Where in the South, we're always right there scratching to get in the state tournament where, you know, it should be five or six of us in the state tournament, only four of us can get there. So I think it gives us a better opportunity to make sure that the best teams are making post play. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Bulldog Blitz. There's a huge game next week in Perkinson. Hope to see you here when Northwest Mississippi makes the trek down for a huge MACCC showdown. Oh, <laughs>